Hi, I'm Mudinda, and I'm here to help you understand maths better for free. Now, grade 11s and matriculants, today we're continuing with our functions topic, looking specifically at reflections and translations. Let's start off by talking about reflections. You can either reflect along the x-axis or along the y-axis. And when we say reflecting along or about the x-axis, we mean using the x-axis as a mirror. So if you look at this pink graph over here and the green graph, you can see that the green graph is a mirror image of the pink graph if our mirror was the x-axis. That's what reflecting along the x-axis means. You can also think about it as what would happen if you folded the page right along the x-axis. Well, the pink graph would move to now be the green graph. It would be a frowning graph that starts over here, 2 is to negative 1 instead of at 2 is to 1. Which brings me to the next point. All the y values change sign when you reflect along the x-axis. What used to be the point 2 is to positive 1 is now 2 is to negative 1. The y value changed sign from 1 to negative 1. A point that used to be negative 2 is to 5 now becomes negative 2 is to negative 5. The y value changes sign when you reflect along the x-axis. And so if g is a reflection of f about the x-axis, then g of x is almost exactly the same as f of x, except all y values change sign, and so I'm going to put a minus right in front of the y. So when you reflect f along the x-axis to form g, that means that g is negative f of x. All y values change sign. You will remember that f of x is just another way to say y. So what we're saying is g of x is simply f of x with a minus in front of its all, all its y values. That's what it means to reflect along the x-axis. So now, for example, if you were told that f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3x minus 10, and you were asked to determine the equation of g, which is f of x reflected along the x-axis, you'd say, okay, well, g, the new graph, is almost exactly the same as f of x, except with a minus in front of its y. So in other words, g of x is negative x squared minus 3x minus 10. That's the equation for f of x. Therefore, g of x is actually negative x squared plus 3x plus 10. This is the reflection of f of x along the x-axis. Now, I'm actually going to show you this visually. I've done it on an online graph sketcher here. Um, say we had the original graph, which was x squared minus 3x minus 10. So that graph would be this green graph here. After doing the reflection, we found a new equation, which was negative x squared plus 3x plus 10. If you have a look at these two graphs, you'll see that the green graph and the uh, I mean, the purple graph is now just a reflection of the green graph along the x-axis. So, our method of finding the equation of a reflection along the x-axis is actually correct. Here on this question, we have that f of x is equal to x minus 2 all squared minus 4. So now, it's in the form a into x minus p all squared plus q, where a is 1, p is 2, and q is minus 4 there. So, determine the equation of p of x, the reflection of f about the x-axis. Well, that's going to mean that p of x is just negative f of x again. That's what we do when we're reflecting along the x-axis. And so p of x is negative into x minus 2 all squared minus 4. Therefore, p of x now this minus 1 needs to multiply that and multiply the minus 4. So p of x is actually negative into x minus 2 squared plus 4. 
But look here, the question said in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And so we have to expand this to now become x minus negative into x minus 2 into x minus 2 plus 4. And so p of x is negative into x squared minus 4x and plus 4, then plus 4 again. So therefore, p of x is equal to negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 and then plus 4. And we know that minus 4 plus 4 is just 0. So this actually ends right here. So this is what it means to reflect a graph along the x-axis. Reflecting along the y-axis is the opposite to that. As you can see, this pink graph is a reflection of the green graph if the mirror was this y-axis. Now, what you'll notice is that um, what was 2 is to 1 is now 2 is to negative 1. What was 2 is to 5 is now negative 2 is to 5. In other words, when we reflect along the y-axis, all x values change sign. So what happens to the equation? Well, if we were told that the green graph g of x is a reflection of f along the x-axis, then that graph g of x is almost exactly the same as f of x, except all x values need to change sign. So we put a minus in front of every x value. That's why I'm putting a minus in front of x. So g of x is equal to f of minus x. This is what it means to reflect along the y-axis, is to change all x values. Let's look at an example. Determine the equation of h, the reflection of g of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 12 along the y-axis. So if h is a reflection of g along the y-axis, that means h of x is equal to g of minus x. When we reflect along the y-axis, we change all x value signs. So therefore, h of x is equal to, now everywhere I see x in the g of x equation, I'm going to put minus x, minus x squared, uh, minus minus x, minus 12. And so h of x is actually, now negative x all squared is x squared. This is now plus x and this is minus 12. This is the equation of h of x which is the reflection of g of x along the y-axis. Great, I hope this makes sense. Let's now talk about translations. Now, matriculants, when we refer to translations, we're referring to shifting graphs up or down or left or right. Let's start off by talking about how vertical shifts work. Shifting something up means adding to y. Shifting something down means subtracting from y. So, for example, imagine we're asked to determine the equation of h of x, which is f of x shifted two units up. All that means is that h of x is f of x plus 2, because shifting up means adding to y. So, therefore, h of x is just x squared minus 5x plus 6 plus 2, which means h of x is x squared minus 5x plus 8. Now, imagine we were told to determine the equation of p of x, which is f of x shifted 4 units down. Well, that would mean that p of x is just f of x minus 4, because shifting down means subtracting from y. And so in our case, p of x would be x minus 2 all squared plus 4 and minus 4. So p of x would just be x minus 2 all squared. This is how we vertically shift graphs. What about horizontal shift? Now, grade 11s, matriculants, this can be a bit confusing. So please pay attention. Here I've drawn three graphs. The black graph is the original parabola y is equal to x squared. But what happens when we shift it two units to the right? What's the equation of that? As you can see, the blue graph is the one that's been shifted two units to the right. That one's equation is actually x minus 2 all squared instead of x squared. 
And so what we notice is that shifting something to the right is introducing a minus right after x to the equation. In other words, if you shift something to the right k units, that's like taking the original f of x and saying minus k in front of x. But shifting to the left means adding 2 to the equation. I know that it is a bit confusing because what you will notice immediately is that, well, now when you've shifted it to the left, it's turning point here is at minus 2, but for some reason the equation has a plus 2. Remember, when we extract the number p from the equation, we'll always flip its sign. This is the very first thing we said in our functions lesson. And so that's why we would see that visually it's a minus 2, but in here it's a plus 2. Let's look at some examples. If we had f of x is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 3, then determine p of x. If p is... Firstly, f of x shifted 3 units to the left. You see, if p is f shifted, let me just move this text quickly to the other side. See, if we're being told that p is f shifted 3 units to the left, that means in front of x, we need to add 3. Because like we said, shifting to the left is a plus on the equation. So therefore, p of x, wherever I see x, I'm now going to put x plus 3. p of x is just x plus 3 minus 2, all squared plus 3. Meaning that therefore, p of x is x plus 1, all squared plus 3. This is the equation of p of x, which is f of x shifted 3 units to the left. What if p of x was f of x shifted one unit to the right. Well then, p of x would be almost exactly the same as f of x, except we would subtract one because we shifted it one unit to the right, and a right shift is a minus on the equation. Okay, it's not a right shift, we can see it's a right shift um, and it moves it to the right to a positive two here, but on the equation it makes it a minus two. Okay, so in our case here, p of x is therefore just x minus 1 minus 2 all squared plus 3, meaning that the new equation p of x is x minus 3 all squared plus 3. This is the equation of p of x if p of x was f of x shifted one unit to the right. Now grade 11's matriculants, let's look at the following three examples. g of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 10. Determine the range of p of x, which is g reflected along the x-axis and shifted two units down. Feel free to pause the video and try the question out first. But note, this question is saying that the new graph p is g reflected along the x-axis and shifted two units down. Remember, what happens when we reflect something along the x-axis? All y values change sign. So the first step is putting minus in front of g of x. This is how we reflect along the x-axis. It then says the graph is then shifted two units down. So we must also subtract two from it. That means that therefore p of x is actually negative into x squared minus 3x minus 10 and then minus two, a reflection along the x-axis as well as a shifting down two units. So therefore p of x is negative x squared plus three x plus 10 minus two. And so p of x is negative x squared plus three x and plus eight. But the question is asking us about the range of p of x. What do you think the range of p of x is? Well, remember that the range of a parabola, if it's a smiling one, is starting from the y value of its turning point going up. If it is a frowning one, it's starting from the y value of its turning point going down. How do we find the turning point of p of x here? Well, to find the turning point of p of x, 
we're going to first start by employing this formula, negative b over 2a, to find the x value of the turning point. So negative into 3 divided by 2 into minus 1. Now what will end up here is negative 3 over negative 2, which is positive 3 over 2. That is the x value of the turning point. Now the y value of the turning point, we can find by plugging in the x value of the turning point into the equation. And so that will be negative into 3 over 2 squared plus 3 into 3 over 2 plus 8. Therefore, the y value of the turning point, at least according to my calculator, is, so I'm going to put negative into 3 over 2 squared plus 3 into 3 over 2 plus 8. This is giving me 41 over 4, which is roughly about 10.25. In fact, it's exactly 10.25. So since we know that our graph is has a negative a, that means it's a frowning graph, which means in terms of range, it exists from the y value of its turning point going down. Therefore, the range is all y values less than or equal to 10,25. Awesome. That's how you'd find the range of p of x if you were told that p of x is a reflection of g of x along the x-axis and a shifting two units down. Now, grade 11's matriculants, here's another one. I encourage you to pause the video and try it out first and compare with what we have. This one says f of x is x plus one all squared minus three. And the question asks, if p is f shifted two units to the right and one unit up, determine the turning point of p. So matriculants, grade 11's there's two ways to answer this question. You could try to find the equation of P and then determine the turning point for P. But I'm going to choose to do it another way. I'm going to say, well, what's the turning point of F? Well, the turning point of F is the value of P flipped, so minus 1, and the value of Q, and minus 3. Now, P, the function P, is the function F shifted two units to the right and one unit up. The whole function has been shifted two units to the right and one unit up, including the turning point. The turning point has been shifted uh, two units to the right. Now, if you're shifting this turning point two units to the right, if it's, if it's at um, negative one and negative three, that's somewhere here. Negative one, negative three. Moving it two units to the right would take it to zero, then one. It would put it right here at one. So the x value of the turning point for P is positive one. Then what about shifting it one unit up? If you shift this one unit up, then it goes to minus two, no longer minus three. And that's how I would find the turning point. But feel free to actually find the equation of P of X and try to find the turning point of P of X. That's also completely okay. Last question, f of x is equal to x minus 2 all squared minus 3. Determine the turning point of p of x if p of x is f of x plus 3 minus 1. Well, we need to determine what p of x is since it's f of x plus 3 minus 1. This is f of x. Wherever I see an x in f of x, I'm going to put x plus 3. Then, at the end of f, I'm going to put minus 1. So p of x is actually x plus 3 minus 2 all squared minus 3 minus 1, meaning that p of x has the equation x plus 1 all squared minus 4. And therefore, the turning point is minus 1 to minus 4. Wow. If you've watched every single one of the videos on the functions topic from the first one, we're completely done with it now. And we're going to be doing in the next video past paper examples on functions. Please leave a like on this video, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and see you in that video.